in this video we are going to discuss about storage structures in operating system that is nothing but storage device hierarchy storage devices are mainly useful in order to store information in the computer uh, we have different types of storage devices such as registers cache main memory magnetic disk optical disk magnetic tape now let us see about all these devices one by one the first one is registers uh, registers are mainly useful in order to store a small piece of information registers can store the information in the form of bits so the size of register may be uh, 8 bits 16 bits 32 bits 64 bits likewise the major advantage of register is cpu can access the data of registers in a faster manner why because registers uh, uh, resides uh, very near to the cpu so that cpu can access the data present in the registers in a faster manner register means a collection of flip flop flip flop uh, register means a collection of flip flop every flip flop can store one bit of data so if the size of register is if it is a 32 bit register then it should be a collection of 32 flip flops okay that is about registers now let us see the second type of memory that is cache memory cache memory is very very small memory but it is a very very faster memory so what what about cache memory it is very very small memory but access speed is very very faster access speed is very very faster access speed is faster and it is very very expensive memory also and it is very very expensive memory also okay uh, now let us see about some more properties about the cache memory cache memory is mainly useful in order to store frequently used instructions so cache memory is useful for storing frequently used instructions let us take the example of a for loop we have a for loop such as i is equal to 0 i less than 100 i plus plus okay so in this situation what we are doing we are repeating the for loop for 100 times so that means uh, cpu has to access i 100 times in those type of situations operating system stores the data in cache memory why because cache memory is very very faster very very faster than main memory okay cpu can access the content of the cache memory as well as cpu can access registers and cpu can also access main memory but cpu cannot access all these secondary memory devices cpu cannot access all these secondary memory devices but here what is the problem with register register store only piece of information it stores 16 bit 32 bit 64 bit likewise only so if you have mb of data then uh, with the help of the register we can't store that much of information so in that type of occasion operating system uses the cache memory okay so uh, so it is mainly useful for storing the frequently used instructions okay cpu can access cache memory content very very fastly than if it resides in main memory now let us see about main memory let us see about main memory main memory is also called as primary memory why because cpu can access the the data if it resides in main memory main memory generally whenever we save the program then the program will be saved in hard disk at the time of compilation also the program will reside in hard disk but at the time of execution operating system transfers the program from hard disk into the main memory hard disk into the main memory let us assume that we have opened uh, some microsoft word initially it will be in hard disk only but whenever we double click on that microsoft word then that microsoft word operating system loads that microsoft word from hard disk into the main memory so it will transfer that word from hard disk into the main memory let us assume that we are watching a movie 
so initially after saving that uh, information after saving that movie it will be stored in hard disk only but while watching whenever we double click on that video then operating system transfers the movie from hard disk into the main memory so here the point is cpu can execute any task if it resides in main memory only so that's why main memory is called as primary memory why because main memory is very very important memory cpu cannot access the content of the secondary memory cpu cannot access secondary memory but cpu can access main memory okay uh, main memory is also called as volatile memory why because volatile means whenever we switch off the computer when the computer is turned off then the contents of the main memory will be lost so that's why main memory is called as volatile memory so we should have a memory which stores the information permanently so for that purpose we use a magnetic disk optical tape and magnetic uh, magnetic disk optical disk and magnetic tape these are called as secondary memory devices secondary memory devices so let us see about what is secondary memory secondary memory is useful in order to store the information permanently in the computer secondary memory is called as non volatile memory non volatile memory so that means when we switch off the computer that is when the computer is turned off then the contents of the secondary memory won't be lost okay this is the major property so if you take any program or if you take any movie or if you take any application after saving that application it will be saved in hard disk only but whenever we open that application so whenever we open a game then that game will be transferred from hard disk into the main memory okay so that is about what is secondary memory the best examples for the secondary memory are magnetic disk magnetic disk is nothing but hard disk so hard disk is the best example for secondary memory whereas the best example for the main memory is ram so ram stands for random access memory okay optical disk means floppy drive cd disks those are nothing but optical disk and now let us see about uh, magnetic tape magnetic tape magnetic tape is also a secondary memory device magnetic tape is also just like magnetic disk optical disk magnetic tape is also a secondary memory device it is also useful in order to store the information permanently in the computer but it is uh, used in the olden days in the olden days magnetic tapes were used the major problem with magnetic tape is it provides sequential access it provides sequential access random access is not possible so sequential access means the records will be accessed one by one let us assume that we have a file which contains totally 100 records so we have a file which contains totally 100 records uh, assumes that we are at 50th record and i want to access 70th record so in a we are at 50 50th record and what is our target we want to access 78th record but the problem with magnetic tape is all the records will be accessed so after 50 we need to access 51 after 51 we need to access 52 after 52 we need to access 53 so likewise we have to access all the records between 50 to 70 directly randomly we can't access 70th record so this is the problem here the access speed is very very slow, very very slow here when compared with magnetic disk magnetic disk is extremely faster when compared with magnetic tape in the olden days magnetic tapes were used but nowadays we are using hard disk that is nothing but magnetic disk only we know about uh, cd rom compact disk floppy drive it is useful in order to store the information permanently in the corresponding disk or in the floppy drive okay Uh, and now let us see about uh, uh, these uh, devices uh, in terms of three properties in terms of three properties uh, let us see about these uh, uh, devices the first property is size the second property is cost and the third property is access speed access speed let us focus on cache memory main memory and uh, magnetic disk okay cache memory main memory and magnetic disk why because register stores the information in that in the in the, in the form of bits only okay 
here the size of the cache memory will be in the forms like uh, 1 MB, 2 MB, 10 MB. So the size is like this 1 MB, 2 MB, 3 MB, 4 MB, 5 MB likewise. Whereas coming to the uh, main memory, the size of the main memory will be in the form of 2 GB, 4 GB, 18 GB, 16 GB, 32 GB, 64 GB likewise. Whereas the size of the magnetic disk will be in the form of 500 GB that is nothing but 200 GB or 1 terabyte. 1 terabyte is nothing but 1024 GB. Likewise, the size will be like this. Now let us see about uh, the cost. Here, in order to buy a 10 MB of cache memory, uh, we need, uh, let us assume that we need some 3000 rupees, 3000, 3, 3K, 3000 rupees. Uh, likewise, in order to buy a 4 GB of the main memory, in order to buy a 4 GB of the main memory, we need to pay 3K rupees. In order to buy 4 GB of the main memory, we need to pay 3 KB. In order to buy 10 MB of the cache memory, we need to pay 3 K. So likewise, in order to buy 1024 GB, uh, we require 3 KB, 3000. So here, what is the point here? Uh, we need 3000 rupees for buying 10 MB of the cache memory, 4 GB of the cache memory, as well as 1024 GB of the main memory. Okay, so here the point is, uh, uh, as the storage capacity increases, as the storage capacity increases, we can say that the cost will decreases. The cost will decreases. So for buying 10 MB of the cache, we require 3K. For buying 4 GB, we require 3K. For buying 1024 GB, we require 3K. So as the storage capacity, as the storage capacity increases, so we can say that the cost will be decreases. The cost per bit will be decreases. As well as what about access speed? Here, the catch memory access speed is very, very faster. Catch memory is extremely faster than the main memory. So, catch memory is very, very faster. Very, very faster than main memory. Coming to the main memory, main memory access, access speed is relatively slower when compared with catch memory. But main memory access speed is extremely faster when compared with hard disk. So here what is the point? Main memory access speed is slower, relatively slower. Relatively slower when compared with, when compared with catch memory. When compared with catch memory. Whereas magnetic disk, magnetic disk case access speed is very very slow. Magnetic disk access speed is very very slow when compared with main memory as well as catch memory. So, as the storage capacity, as the storage capacity increases, as storage capacity increases, we can say that storage capacity is nothing but size. So, we can say that, we can say that cost will decreases, cost will decreases as well as access speed also decreases, access speed also decreases. So, cache memory is very faster. Main memory is relatively slower when compared with the cache memory, but main memory is very, very fast when compared with magnetic disk. Magnetic disk is very, very slower when compared with main memory and cache memory. So why we need cache memory? Why? Because the cache memory is extremely faster when compared with main memory. CPU access time is very, very faster. CPU access time is very, very faster in a millisecond. CPU can execute lakhs of instructions. CPU access speed matches with cache memory access speed. Main memory access speed is very very slower when compared with the CPU. When compared with the CPU, main memory is very very slower. So in order to compensate that speed difference only, we are using the cache memory. So why we need these different types of memories means in order to produce in average performance with minimum cost. Uh, we need all these uh, devices. So this is about uh, storage structure or uh, some storage device hierarchies in operating system.